Hi, welcome all to Steering Mariners once again. And today we have with us Captain Asanka, who is a very experienced master mariner. And he was uh, here with us uh, on a previous uh, video chat as well, where he shared his experiences on the career options available to our uh, seafarers if they want to quit sea or if they want to start something while they are sailing to find some opportunities in the future ashore. Today's topic is also very important. This is something that I wanted to talk with him for a long time. Um, Captain has done a lot of uh, stuff. He has tried his hands at a lot of stuff, especially regarding business and investment, uh, because seafarers uh, make uh, good money, if we, we can all accept that. And seafarers need to invest uh, um, in businesses or make investments uh, in uh, opportunities that are available so that they get some return on their investment, especially when they are planning to quit their sea life. So in that regards, today we'll talk to Captain Asanka and uh, get some valuable tips and advice from him as to what businesses are right for seafarers, what mistakes they can make if they want to get into business uh, while they are sailing or if they have quit sailing and uh, planning to settle ashore. And also we'll talk about some investment options which are good for seafarers and we'll only be talking about uh, seafarers perspective. We are not here experts on investment or we are not telling you exactly what to do, but we'll talk about what challenges seafarers face and what they should be mindful of before they spend their hard-earned money and try to secure a future. So Captain Asanka, welcome to Steering Mariners and uh, I would like to get some advice from you on uh, mistakes that seafarers make when they try to get into business. What are the things they should be wary of, they should be mindful of? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you for having me again. Um, yeah, on that note, uh, the first, I think, is going to speak about the challenges. So, I think one of the biggest challenges seafarers have uh, when they think about doing a business or investments, we'll first speak about businesses and then we'll move on to investments later, is that they think that they can be instantly successful, whatever they do. In, in terms of a business. Uh, we are seafarers, when you start getting money and uh, when you are thinking of doing something else, we think that, okay, we can throw money and get some instant success. But I think that is a myth and we should first get that out of our system. Um, and the other thing is you have to play with your strengths and weaknesses. So as seafarers, because uh, most seafarers like you and I, especially like we start at a very young age and we know only about ships. And so we have to learn about businesses first to get a hang of it because that's the other challenge. Because there are so many different types of businesses you can um, have a look at, but you need to choose whatever is right for you. For example, um, let's say that there are uh, two different types of businesses. One type of business is where you sell a product. And another uh, type of business is where you sell a service. But you can do these two types of businesses in various ways. Um, I think the, the most uh, accepted ways of doing them are online or uh, physically. Like if you're selling a product, say, for example, you sell, um, you sell books or you sell furniture. So you have a, a physical store and you have a, a, a storekeeper and you sell uh, it to other people. Or you can have it online. You can have a virtual store and you can sell uh, things online and deliver your products uh, when someone buys your products online. Or you can have um, a, another business, a service type business where you can say you're a plumber or an electrician. Um, say that, for example, I know some electricians who are marine electrical engineers who uh, became normal electrical uh, engineers or electricians ashore. So, but they had to physically go there and fix something for someone or, or stuff like that. Or you can also do that online. But we'll speak about that later. But whatever happens, um, and one of the biggest uh, uh, mistakes I, mean, I came across was uh, thinking that if you become successful in a business, that's all, that, that, that's the end of it. But the real challenge comes if you are lucky enough to be successful. Because once you're successful, it's like holding on to the tail of a tiger. 
you can't just start something and just leave it because it will come back and bite you because there are so many other obligations coming uh, with a successful business okay but one thing i want to ask you is that of course one thing one major challenge with seafarers is that uh, you know if they are planning to start a business while they are sailing so they do that a lot they try to start something while they are sailing and they know they will not be physically present either to provide a product or a service and uh, you are i know you are doing it in a way and we'll talk a little bit about that later on but uh, they have to be aware of the fact that they have to provide the customers with a the service they have to be there they have to be very active in their business whether it's uh, uh, physical or whether it's a product or a service so what they many times they do is they try to get into business with friends and family who are either starting out or they are kind of settled into a business is that a good idea is that something you will recommend um i honestly can't recommend starting a business even with your best friend uh because i had a very bad experience uh i started a business with uh, someone i started uh, i mean i knew since childhood and i invested a, a quite a bit of money actually i invested uh, 30000 australian dollars with him and we were uh, going to have a partnership in selling cars or selling vehicles and i think i got back about 4000 dollars and everything went uh, to a bust because uh, the first thing is a uh, people have their own commitments mm. i mean when we start out um maybe things look differently to what it would be 5 years down the track or some things can change in a very abrupt way or suddenly some things can change with someone so if you are involved with another person uh, if something bad happens to that person is going to affect you as well mm. because that's if, if someone goes past doesn't mean that you have to go down with him so that is why i think that it is much better and least stressful um if you start business on your own because uh, starting partnerships it, i mean i know that there are many very very successful partnerships and stress free partnerships but i think they are very rare yes so, <laughs> because, let me tell you uh, one thing and uh, the other biggest thing i have seen is people start people have uh, um short relationships with other people and think they are very genuine but only when they start the business and when they go ahead step by step they realize that oh this is not the same person i thought he was and and in this case it becomes another problem as well absolutely so i think the the message here is that because i know i have seen many of my uh, friends doing it and that's why i thought i'll discuss it with you that uh, seafarers because they have access to some large sums of money what they feel is they can throw that money at a business and get return on investment immediately or get into a successful business and benefit from it without understanding the business this is something i should i think seafarers should be very mindful of unless they are getting into business with someone very trustworthy which i think is very rare uh, even sometimes i have seen uh, relationships in within the family going wrong as well yes. absolutely so uh, captain tell me something now see if it was because they are selling on ships uh, if they are getting into business uh, should they think about quitting sea and getting into business is that a good idea or how can they be at sea and be very active in the business how can that happen with them yes so basically in my case why i invested a lot of money with a friend of mine was because i can't be physically at home all the time mm. so that was the biggest challenge as a safe i to start a business so mm. so that is why i realized after that i need to learn about business mm. and people think if you do mba i know that you have done mba i've done mba uh, just because you've done mba it doesn't mean that you know about business there are so many things you need to learn um practically mm. so when you start a business you are in the deep water so but i recommend is if you are planning to quit c okay it's okay to quit c as long as it suits you and start a business but you have to have a 100% uh, in and out knowledge of that business mm. so but i recommend is if you are planning to quit say you have to have a plan mm. you have a plan and then it's not a it won't be a quick plan either because it takes a long time you try this try that and you have a good plan because 
plans don't <laughs> you know work out most of the time yeah absolutely sometimes most probably you will fail because uh, talk about businesses i think if my memory is right only 5% of businesses succeed hmm. if you start a business today so there is a 95% chance that your business will fail hmm. that means that you are going to lose that money as well yeah emotionally as well and it's going to affect your family as well mm. so you have to take all these things into consideration mm. and the other uh, bad bit about it is even if you are in that 5% of the successful businesses i think even out of that you have only about a 5% chance to survive for the next 5 years Hmm. so which i am not trying to uh, discourage anyone from starting a business but that these are the steps and the steps speak for themselves yeah absolutely i think i think this is very important that we are trying to tell the seafarers and mariners here is this is speci- this video is specially for them and what captain is trying to say is he's not trying to discourage you guys what he's saying a lack of research a lack of knowledge will lead to failure so if you have the required knowledge the experience or you have been part of a business which you have learned he is not uh, asking you to stay away from that what he is saying that no matter what business you go into don't just throw your money into it that's the message here please do your research please take it as seriously as you have taken your job make sure that before you get into the waters of the business you know the water very well you can swim through it that is the message he is giving you so don't think that he is discouraging you in any way or not is that correct captain yeah 100% and i think we spoke about this what i'm going to say in our last video as well like if you have a plan say that okay you think that okay i'm going to quit say in another 5 years mm. uh, for example and if you can plan you or manage your salary in a way that it's going to help you towards uh, that rather than uh, buying a bigger house or waste your money in buying a bigger car uh, i think that will be very helpful because Uh, like for example a tanker chief officer today gets uh what 10000 12000 us dollars uh, a master gets uh, over 15000 dollars like uh, as a vlcc master mm. and so we can manage our money very well like for example you get make 25% of your salary for your daily expenses mm. and 25% you can save for the future mm. and 25% you can actually invest we'll talk about it later and another 25% you can use for charity and stuff and also you can use that to learn about a business so if you have a plan like this by the end of 5 years you are very ready you are ready for the challenges you have only thought about your strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and everything and which which is going to set you up for success rather than you just stop uh, see life today and you put in 100000 dollars and trying to start a business because that i think that is uh, not the correct way of doing it absolutely and one thing we need to keep in mind is as seafarers um again there are four types of businesses uh, there are some businesses uh, which gives you money freedom which makes you a lot of money mm. i mean i'm assuming that you're successful mm. that you're successful you make a lot of money but those that business can consume a lot of time of yours mm. and it can be very very stressful there's another type of business if you are successful you don't get much money but you have a lot of time freedom mm. so you can travel you can spend time with your family friends and stuff like that and there's another type uh which you can make a lot of money and you have a lot of free time as well so that's the type of business we should i mean at least our i recommend mm. to aim for mm. lot of money more time with your friends and family yeah. and the third type is you don't get much money mm. no you get um time freedom that's so right. that we need to avoid at any cost so this is very very important because this you will figure out once you're only successful and then it's too late to change absolutely Or very difficult to change change absolutely i think these are some very important tips uh, we are giving to seafarers and mariners is because uh, you know we are uh, living our lives mostly on ships and we have a very different idea about what we see ashore and this is what i think captain is trying to tell you guys is that uh, you know before you get into anything make sure you find out uh, at what cost you are going to get that if you get that and uh, before you put in all your money your funds 
think about your future as well have a safety option backup option the 25% allocation of funds that he recommends of course it's not an absolute figure that was just an example but yeah. what i'm trying to tell you guys is that because we come from a very narrow perception of life that is on ships life on ships uh, we see the world very differently and that is something you have to be prepared for once you decide to get into a field like business it's like any other job like any other field you have to know your stuff you have to research it very well uh, thank you captain i think we want we should quickly now move into investments because uh, see i and you can talk about a lot of seafarers we know mariners who have failed miserably in investments and businesses and instead of settling ashore they had to go back to sea sometimes even at a low, late late age you know they are much older and learners and they had to go back we can talk about that uh, and that is the warning i want to send out to all our young seafarers and mariners who are planning to do the same and that is why i want to know from you many seafarers think because they have a lot of money and they are investing uh, and sometimes they think safe investments is real estate uh, please give them some uh, tips and advice on how they should invest the money so that they don't lose it because when they invest it they think that uh, definitely this is an investment i'm never going to lose it but even with safe investments like real estate things can go wrong so what advice would you give them uh, on how they should be investing the money to secure their future yeah i mean talking about investments like um with my limited knowledge um i look at uh, uh, real estate and shares and uh, cryptocurrency so all these uh, all three of these have different Uh, pros and cons. Hmm. Um, talking about real estate, I think one of the biggest challenges seafarers have is we try to acquire something, acquire a property on a loan, hmm. and and as seafarers we are very bold in taking loans as well because the banks are, are you know queuing up to give us loans because we know that we earn big money, hmm. but. what i have seen is uh, people go into real estate investments for large amounts of money they take as loans and then it takes them donkey's years to pay back that's correct and their whole life they're stuck mm. in in that particular house and uh, or, or land mm. so i think we need to uh, draw a line where we think is the comfortable zone for us and we have to think also we need to have a backup for example i'm talking about real estate especially if you lose your job mm. because our uh, seafarer job is not a permanent job in, uh, in most places that's right uh, because um, you can do a mistake or uh, things might not go uh, your way or you might have a uh, family issues mm. and maybe you can't afford to leave your family for 2 3 4 months at a stretch because of some issues at home mm. so you have to take all these things in consideration because mm. uh, nothing is going to be a ball in the park or walk in the park Mm. so we need to be prepared if, for rainy days basically mm. Mm. so thinking that okay i'll take this loan i'll buy this property i'll give it for rent or i'll hold it on to it for 10 years and sell it at double the price you know these are the type of um fairy uh, story <laughs> tales that we tell ourselves but it's not going to be very easy mm. Maybe, and i know some people bought a big i mean uh, properties uh, with a aim of uh, selling them for a bigger profit after say uh, 10 15 years down the line but mm. uh, for example take perth mm. you know, perth property markets have crashed so badly mm. and mm. people who spend millions of dollars mm. you know the more money they spend the uh, the more losses they are going to incur now mm. so you mm. have to be extremely careful and you need again research research is the main thing mm. and just look at the last uh, 30 40 50 years in real estate if you are planning to buy uh, any property even mm. in a high rise building or if you are buying an apartment or or a house there are different things you have to consider mm. how much rent you can get from it and if something goes wrong with your life can you just manage until you get back to see no mm. things like that you have to be extremely careful absolutely absolutely i completely agree with you and uh, this is why we say that uh, Uh, we know how seafarers and mariners think because we have been seafarers for a long time we are and captain is still sailing and we know how you guys think and that is why we are not discouraging you from doing anything what we are trying to tell you is the advice that nobody will give you because they are not seafarers people are sure property investors or bankers or people who work ashore even your own friends and family they don't understand how you think we know how you guys think and that is why we are giving you the advice is before you get into anything do your own research find out your own uh, 
information, make sure you analyze it and the decision should be yours. It should not be an emotional one, not advised by somebody who doesn't know. Uh, so get into either you should talk to many people, do a lot of research before you spend that hard earned money uh, and before you lose it all. So that is with real estate. Of course, uh, like Captain said, you do your research and then buy. Uh, Captain, can you talk a little bit about this new thing, crypto that has come up or stocks? Again, seafarers, how should they go about investing? Should they yeah. help of uh, like stock brokers and or they should do their own research because they don't have the time to do their own research. Should they take that help? Or what about crypto? A little bit about that as well, please. Yeah, from what I understood about stocks and uh, crypto is it is the easiest way to lose all your money. That's right. If you want to lose your money, just you can blow it out very easy on stocks and crypto. Absolutely. When you're talking about stocks, you know, there are various types of stocks you can uh, invest in ASX, uh, NASDAQ, or even in Indian Stock Exchange, or you know, in, anywhere. But again, research. And the thing is, in stocks and crypto, the amount of scammers out there is mm. unbelievable. Mm. And as seafarers, uh, we tend to uh, believe people more easier in the right. more than people who work on land because we don't interact with people that much. That's they're, right. Correct. They're on a ship for a month at a time, and uh, we develop this uh, sort of trusting nature yes. because we're in a community. That's and, right. And I think we are at that risk of uh, you know getting into those type of um, you know uh, scams and losing our money. Hmm. Okay, that's about scams. But even, uh, I mean, apart from scams, stocks or crypto or anything, um, which is a zero sum game, hmm. we need to remember that the banks are the winners. <laughs> we are never going to win. It's like in the game going, it's not, I don't, I won't call it gambling unless you no. don't know what you're doing. But even if you study the markets and even if you invest with, with the backing of research and knowledge, still there is a, a probability you can lose your money at least up to an extent. Mm. So you need to research and it's research, research, research. Yes, that's right. And, and the thing is, even when you say, uh, I think uh, you just spoke about stock brokers, Alan, even stock brokers, they don't care about your money. No. Because they didn't earn that money. You that's work right. hard for that money. That's if you right. lose that money, the stock broker is not going to give it back to you. Hmm. So you have your own research because now people think that, oh, we only need to uh, go through a stock or we actually need to go to a stock broker if you're going to invest in stocks. But that is not true hmm. uh, because if someone wants to get more knowledge hmm. about uh, different stocks, there are um, software services out there online uh, hmm. mainly where you can uh, have a uh, not a very exorbitant sum of money as a subscription, but you can pay, say, $20 a month or something. Right? That was an example. Mm -hmm. And you can learn about stocks. Mm -hmm. When I say learn about stocks, this is not learning about how to invest in stocks. Mm -hmm. This is to learn, uh, to get an idea which stocks can perform, which stocks may perform in the next uh, two to three or four or five years. Mm -hmm. So don't just rely on a stockbroker and put all your hard money in, in with one stockbroker because that is an easy way to lose all your money. Mm -hmm. So that is about stocks. And, Absolutely. And talk so, about crypto. Yeah, yeah. crypto. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yes, please go on. Crypto. Yeah, talk about crypto. It is even more volatile and dangerous than um, um, uh, stock market. Uh, normal stock market investing. Mm -hmm. Also, when I say about stock market, uh, you can also take the same information for foreign currency exchange, forex markets as well. Mm. But, uh, when you talk about crypto, they are so volatile. And you can see that many people are making a lot of money in crypto. But the, the more volatility in the market, the more money you can make. Mm. Which means, on the flip side, the more money you can lose. Lose as well. Uh, yes. as well. So, even again about crypto, you need to understand what you're doing. You need to understand what the blockchain is. You need to understand what the hash graph is. You need to understand what different tokens do. You need to understand what different um, coins are made for. Mm. And, and then the addition which, I mean, I think now as of today, I think there might be about more than 7,500 cryptocurrencies yes. available to buy. So right. you need to uh, be very careful. And if you talk, um, 
um, I mean, if you want to get my opinion on crypto, I wouldn't invest in any crypto other than the first hundred. Hmm. The top ranking hundred you can get from uh, 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 marketcap.com. Um, hmm. um, uh, so, sorry, coinmarketcap.com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, you need to study about all those coins and tokens. So basically what I'm trying to say is you need to spend a lot of time. You need to spend a lot of time for either of these yeah. before you invest and put a lot Absolutely. of effort and try to understand what you're doing. Absolutely. And that is, that is why we made this video. This video was not because we are any investment experts or business experts. What we discussed before we made this video was we have seen many, many seafarers and I have made mistakes. I don't want to get into and he has made a lot of mistakes that uh, we don't have time to discuss here. And I'm sure you guys will make mistakes as well, but we want you to avoid making such mistakes or huge mistakes, which lead to huge losses. Please don't make emotional decisions. This is something we have observed that seafarers do. They lose their hard earned money, money that they have, they have you know, earned by staying away from their family and they lose in hundreds and thousands of dollars. And it's something that we don't want you guys to do. And that is why we decided to make this video. So if you have any questions uh, for us, we want to keep this video as short as possible. We wanted to discuss both business investment. Please send it to me and I'll pass it on to Captain here and he'll talk about that. Uh, we can go on and on talking to him about the business and investment opportunities because he's doing a lot of many things, uh, but we wanted to keep it short. So thank you very much, uh, Captain, for joining us and for sharing your valuable experience with us. Uh, and we, uh, we want the Mariners to learn from you and um, your experience as well. So thank you and uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully with another video and another topic. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.